So one of the latest Nokia branded smartphones to hit the UK is this bad boy right here, the Nokia X10. It'll cost you 249 quid. You've got a lovely bit of stock Android 11 with the guaranteed updates, of course, as well. But of course, there is a lot of rivalry at this sort of price point in the smartphone realm right now. So I'm going to whip it on out of the box, take you on a full on tour of the hardware and the software to see if it really is worth that cash. And I'm also going to compare it side by side with the Nokia X20, which is a similar sort of price, to see which one might be best for you. And for more on the latest, greatest tech, please do plug subscribe ending that notifications bell. Cheers! All right, so what you get bundled in here is, of course, one Nokia X-rated smartphone. You've got your Type-C USB cable, and you've also got a compostable case bundled in there, not a condom case, as you can see there. And it's got a lovely speckled effect, glistening like fresh Saturday morning vomit. And HMD Global, who manufactures the Nokia handsets now, is doing away with wall chargers in its boxes, so you won't find one of those bundled in here. But what you can do uh, to feel good about yourself is visit this website, enter the phone's IMEI, and as you can see there, a bit of tree action will be planted on your behalf. Probably just as well, really, because there's about a tree's worth of random manuals and pamphlet action bundled with the Nokia X10. All right, so that's the contents of the box. Now let's check out the Nokia X10 in all of its splendid, raw, naked glory. So stick the Nokia X10 side by side with the Nokia X20 and good frickin' luck telling them apart. Basically, they're pretty much identical in every single respect. This is the forest green model of the Nokia X10. It is, of course, a plastic back here on the Nokia X10 as with the X20. Nice, simple, classic Nokia finish. I really do like the aesthetics, actually. Just looks very neatly and tidily put together, including the sloping uh, circular camera chassis up top. And it's not a seamless chassis, as you can see there. You do have a separate engine as well, but it does uh, blend nicely. And the Nokia X10 screen is coated in Gorilla Glass 3, whereas it's Gorilla Glass 5, slightly upgraded for the X20, but the X10 should still hopefully prove nice and scratch resistant, especially as you get a pre-installed screen protector on both these blowers anyway. And the Nokia X10, like the X20 before, it is IP52 splash resistant as well, so absolutely fine. If it gets a bit moist, it uh, should be fine in the uh, sudden frequent downpours we're experiencing here in the UK right now, uh, but definitely don't go dropping it in the sink, the bath, anything like that. And both these phones are proper hefty as well. At 210 grams a piece, you'll certainly feel them when they're stashed in your shorts. Yeah, the Nokia X10, despite being quite wide, does feel good in the hands. Not much of note around the rest of the design. You've got an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor just below that volume rocker on the right edge. Over on the left edge, you've got the dedicated Google Assistant button, of course, just below the SIM tray. And then down below, hip hip are a good bit of headphone jack action. Nice. Let's just give the Nokia X10 a cheeky wee poke as well and check out what is inside that SIM tray. And what you have here is space for two SIM cards at the same time, side by side. Otherwise, that second SIM slot can be used to expand the storage via micro SD instead. All right, so it's time to get the Nokia X10 all set up and let's take a proper full on tour of the rest of the specs. All right, so we've got the Nokia X10 all set up identically to the Nokia X20 and the software experience is basically the same. What you've got is the latest, freshest Android 11 OS in a pleasingly stock form, no heavy launcher or anything like that shoved on top. And that means basically no crapware shoved on here either. The likes of Netflix uh, was pre-installed, uh, but apart from that, it's basically all just your standard Google apps. And one of the main reasons to grab yourself a Nokia branded smartphone in 2021 is definitely not just the stock Android experience, but the fact that you've got the guaranteed three years of OS and security updates as well, which very few rivals offer. Even OnePlus with its fresh new Nord smartphones only guarantees two years of OS updates and three of security. And it's got all the features you'd hope for and expect on here, including NFC with a good bit of Google Pay support for your contactless payments. And on the security side, no real difference between the Nokia X10 and the Nokia X20. Again, it's an edge-mounted fingerprint sensor, which so far, touch wood, seems nice and responsive, just like on the X20. And to back that up, if you happen to have sticky mitts, you've got face unlock support as well, and it's nowhere near as fast as that fingerprint sensor, as you can see, it takes its time just sussing out whether it really is you, but it does seem to get there in the end. And the Nokia X10, again, just like the Nokia X20, also has a dedicated Google Assistant button here on the side, and you just push that at any point and up it pops. And yeah, I still don't really know what the point of that is because you can call up the Google Assistant in so many other ways, such as just tapping this little microphone down here, for instance. You can swipe up from the bloody bottom corners as well. Like, there are so many ways of doing it. Why do we need a button? And if you do dive into the gestures section in the settings menu on the Nokia X10, you will see there's a Google Assistant button option there. So you can disable it if you like, but it's just a shame you can't remap it to another app or feature 
that you actually use quite a bit. And you've got lots of other gesture support in here as well, including uh, the likes of lift to check phone or raise to wake as it's more commonly known. And this is quite slow to work, but when it does work, it can be combined with that face unlock. Hello, have you, yeah, you got it, there we go. As for the storage, where well, you've got 128 gigs as standard here on the Nokia X20, whereas on the Nokia X10, it comes with 64 gigs as standard. There is supposedly a 128 gig model, but it seems to be out of stock on the UK Nokia website. And thankfully, both phones also support MicroSD memory cards of up to 512 gigs, so no worries there. When it comes to the screens, again, no difference between the Nokia X10 and the Nokia X20. It's got the same 6.67 inch IPS panel with a full HD plus resolution to give your visuals reasonably crisp, despite the fact it's a whopper of a display. You've got limited customization, but those colors are sort of reasonably poppy for an IPS. The brightness levels are pretty decent as well. You won't struggle outdoors. Viewing angles are nice and wide. But of course, you do get that selfie orifice cam stuffed right in the central position, just like on those Samsung blowers. So it kind of gets in the way a little bit when you go full screen. And it is kind of a shame that at the opposite end to the selfie cam, you've got this big fat bottom lip with a bit of Nokia Brandon on there, not really sure what that's doing. And yes, sadly, these are only 60 hertz panels, so you don't get that lovely silky smooth effect that you do on certain other smartphones when you're flicking around on the desktops and the like. But thankfully, the lack of a heavy launcher does keep things reasonably smooth anyway. As for the speaker, well, it is just a mono output, unfortunately, no stereo speaker action, despite the fact it's quite a sizable handset. But let's bump up the volume, see if it's actually any good. But for now, to keep our juices well and truly flown, HMD Global has whipped open its tech trench coat and dazzled us with new Nokia branded smartphones. Well, that speaker is certainly proper bloody loud on that top volume, ear poppingly so, but unfortunately clarity does take a hit once you get up to those uh, top of volume levels. And of course, as you heard there, if you uh, do accidentally cover the speaker, then the sound is very badly muffled. At least like the X20, you got that bit of headphone jack action if you want to get plugged in. Otherwise, good bit of Bluetooth support as well. As far as performance goes, again, bugger all difference between these two Nokia handsets as well. They're both running the Snapdragon 480 chipset, quite a basic uh, platform. Certainly for a phone around this price point, you can certainly get much better grunt from some rivals like Xiaomi, for instance. Uh, but that's backed by six gigs of RAM, again, on both the X10 and the X20. And as you can see, they're very similar results in Geekbench. Plus, one of the benefits of the 480 chipset is the fact that you've got built-in 5G support as well. So if you do want that 5G future-proofing to go hand-in-hand -in -hand with the guaranteed OS and security updates, then you are sorted. And yeah, I have seen a couple of little judders here and there when I've been skipping through the desktops, loading apps and such forth, but touch with nothing Severe so far, especially helped along by the fact that it's stock Android. So Touchwood should be fine for everyday shenanigans. And as I say, if you're into gaming, I would suggest looking elsewhere. Check out my roundup of the best budget 5G phones right now for uh, alternatives with a bit more grunt, not to mention dedicated gaming modes as well. But I'd expect the likes of PUBG and Call of Duty Mobile to play absolutely fine on the X10, just as they did on the X20. And yeah, as expected, Call of Duty Mobile on that maxed out frame rate setting with the high detail level set as well. Absolutely flawless performance, not a single judder whatsoever. Screen nice and responsive as well, so it certainly had a bit of a competitive edge despite being crap in games. Just obviously don't test the Nokia X10 with a bit of Genshin Impact or anything like that. As for the battery tech, well, once again, bug roll difference between the Nokia X10 and that Nokia X20. It's a 4,470 milliamp battery, very precise there on the capacity. Easily lost you the full day thanks to that nice streamlined stock Android experience, the fact you got that energy efficient 480 chipset. And when you do need to recharge, it's 18 watts fast charging, not really fast charging at all. 18 watts, slow as a sloth with one leg charging, but it, whatever, it's fine. As for that camera tech, well, once again, the Nokia X10 rocks a quad lens camera setup, just like the X20, although it is slightly different hardware. It's a 48 megapixel primary sensor here on the Nokia X10, whereas that was upgraded to a 64 megapixel effort for the Nokia X20. However, it's a very similar shooting experience on both the Nokia X10 and the Nokia X20. As you can see, the UI is basically identical. You've got those AI smarts on board that do recommend uh, switching to an alternative mode. Uh, so for instance, if I got a recommendation to switch to portrait for shooting good old Veronica here. As for the difference in primary sensor between the X10 and the X20, well, put samples taken from both phones side by side, you'll struggle to notice the difference. Occasionally, the X20 seems to capture slightly more detail and slightly more natural looking colors, but you do have to really stick these photos side by side and scrutinize them quite closely to see what the difference is. You do have the same selection of bonus modes on here, of course, including the aforementioned portrait mode, which uses the two megapixel depth sensor found on both these handsets just to help set your subject apart from the background and add a nice bokeh style effect, which you can actually fully customize by tapping this little icon here. 
So you've got the Zeiss swirl, for instance, otherwise nice but smooth action. You can even turn the background into stars or hearts. We've also got a night mode on both of these Nokia handsets for your low light shots. And then if you tap more, a selection of other bonus bits as well, including a full on pro mode and just adds proper manual controls for changing up the likes of the ISO levels, the white balance. And in the pro mode, you can even shoot in RAW. And both phones also boast a five megapixel ultra wide angle shooter, which is fairly basic, but it does uh, the job if you want it just slightly more pulled back viewpoints. You've also got a basic two megapixel macro shooter on both these Nokia handsets, but the less said about that, the better. And if you do want to be shooting a bit of video action as well, well, bad news, there's no full key option on either of these handsets. It's full HD, it's either 30 or 60 frames per second. And of course, flip around to the front facing cams, the Nokia X10 makes do with a very basic eight megapixel selfie shooter, but you'll probably notice there the X20 is is, uh, packing a bit more detail on the go that's because it upgrades it to a 32 megapixel selfie shooter although frankly both of them make me look like i'm dust up on happy juice so there you have it there is my full unboxing and in a nutshell what you can expect from the nokia x10 smartphone 249 quid right here in the uk now it stacks up with that slightly more expensive nokia x20 as you can see not really that much difference between them at all certainly in terms of battery life performance the general software smarts so it'd be ruddy wonderful to hear your own personal thoughts on the nokia x10 and x20 down in the comments below you're tempted by either of them if so which one really floats your boat and please for more on the latest and greatest tech do put subscribe ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a fantastic rest of the week cheers everyone love you